I'm ready for it to get, oh my God. I wasn't ready. I was not. <laughs> You're so small. Nintendo released the Switch in 2017, putting a focus back on portability. Nobody else wanted to do that. Not Microsoft, not Sony. Meanwhile, Nintendo has sold over 100 million of these bad boys. And even though Sony experimented once before, they have yet to do it again. And Microsoft hasn't, and neither is Elon Musk. I mean, nobody is challenging Nintendo in the space that they're in. We unbox the light, we unbox the OLED. This is the only handheld gaming machine. But while we were all worrying about Switch Pro, a bearded man was busy creating. While we wondered about more powerful chipsets, and while we wondered about how long the Switch life cycle would last, Gabe Newell was getting it on. Today, I'm here to unbox my Steam Deck, compare it to the Switch, and see if this is the future of gaming. It's been getting rave reviews. It is basically a Switch, but way stronger. All right, this thing is looking to be one heck of a system. And honestly, as a massive Switch fan, Mr. Switch Force, this is a big deal, all right? The PS5 is out, the Xbox Series X is out, but those are not really in the same avenue, the same area, the same vein as the Switch, and the Steam Deck is the closest thing we've had since the Switch released. And here it is, inside of its box, inside of its case, I got the 256 gig unit, your games are going places, and already you can tell that this is gonna be one big system. So what's going on guys and girls? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hit that like button if you love the Switch and let me know in the comments down below after you see this thing if your mind might be changing and do you think there's a chance that Steam Deck could usurp Nintendo Switch? All right, like I love to do, it's always the small box first. And inside here, there is a box that says power. Now, the power of the Steam Deck is something that does concern me. I remember when we were worried about the Switch's battery life and we were like, Okay, like four, five, six hours. That doesn't sound like a lot. This is really stuck in here. But the Steam Deck apparently sometimes is two to three hours, depending on what you're playing. Now, obviously you can reduce the settings to reduce the battery consumption, or you can plug in via an AC adapter. So we're gonna slide this off. I'm glad it comes with the case. It's interesting. You know, the Switch always has those lovely boxes. And I think the OLED box is the best box. They got that nice, rectangular red design. But Valve is pulling an apple and they're like, yo, we're just gonna, the, the shipping box is the box. It's just, it's just there. You just open it, boom, here is the Steam Deck. And the size is the prize that I am so eager to see. There's, oh, what is this? They've got this thing on lockdown. Look, it's like locked, I can't, what on earth? Is this to keep the Nintendo fans out? They're like, yo, we know you love Switch. You can't, this is so weird. They got this nice band here. We popped the plastic, it required a little bit of force. And now we get to see the Force Awaken. How big is the Steam Deck? I have never held one of these. I want to see. Let's hold the Switch, okay? Switch, the OLED with the bigger screen, no bezel, a lovely system. I think this feels great. I'm ready for it to get... Oh my God. I wasn't ready. I was not... <laughs> You're so small. You're so slight. This is portable gaming on a diet. And this right here, my friends, is portable gaming eating dessert for every meal. The Steam Deck be massive. This is a portable PC in your hands and it's not even close. It's not even, I thought some of the pictures were exaggerating. I hope you, I know there's some reflection. Look at that. It's not even close. It's not even close. The Steam Deck is the big chungus. This is a really nice visual here because you can see how the screens are virtually the same, although the OLED does eke it out. And I gotta say the vibrancy on the OLED, it's still pretty freaking great. Like it takes the crown for vibrancy, but no offense to Kirby and his little puff, the graphics on the Steam Deck are just notably stronger, like absolutely undeniably stronger. Also the heat. It's legit burning my fingers coming out of the vent because this is a personal computer packed into the palm of your hand. The OLED screen still looking fancy and fine. There's Kirby, ready for action. 25th of March, coming your way. And there's the Aperture Science Labs. You can see the smoke effects on this toilet. The graphics are not trash. 
They do not belong in the toilet. My fingers are literally going to burn. This thing is putting out some serious heat. That is one thing the Switch does not do. Here's your home screen experience. Still themeless, but we do have that snazzy new Mario Odyssey icon. And here's your home screen experience. It's very steamy. In fact, you have a dedicated steam button right here that allows you to bring up your menu. The store interface, as you notice, is very much like Steam itself. And oh my gosh, this console can play Elden Ring. If you have like the big hand issue with the Joy-Con, you're not gonna be having a problem with this, but it's got a true D-pad. Oh my gosh, I'm already in love with that. The sticks, oh, the sticks. The poor sticks on this Switch. Look, the Pro Controller has perfect sticks, but the sticks on this feel like an Xbox set of sticks. They feel like an Xbox set of sticks, a Pro Controller set of sticks. This thing though, holy cow, it's it's hollowed out in the back, which is so weird. You can kind of tell, like it's just missing like the back, right? It feels like a battery pack would just be like, chunk. It's not though. They have this done in such a way that it's not very heavy. So for as big as it looks, and trust me, it is big to hold, <laughs> Michael Scott, uh, it really is not that heavy. And the finger placement Everything feels good. People were all very worried about the buttons, right? Because when you have the Switch, you know, you're looking, you're like, okay, the button placement is kind of right where I'd expect it to be, right? It's like above the right stick, below the left stick, and it's kind of right in, in the middle, right? Your hands are kind of just, it's centered with the screen. The Steam Deck opts to go a different direction, and that direction is up. Everything is, is shifted up, right? Because they've got these touch pads here for you to use mouse movement. They've got your sticks at the top, and then they've got the buttons on the edges here, which seems odd, but in reality, it feels very natural. And this screen, it's about the size of the OLED screen, and it looks like it's gonna be pretty nice. Now the triggers are dreaming. Okay, the controls are what, oh, like I want the Switch to have more power, right? I know that's an important thing for Switch Pro, Switch 4K, whatever you wanna call it. I know that's what everyone focuses on. But now, I want a form factor upgrade. I want something that is premium, for the controls. Now, what's interesting is the Switch Lite does not have Joy-Con, and you'd think that would allow them to kind of mix things up and maybe make a stronger uh, set, of, set of controls, right? The triggers could be better. So maybe the next Switch, if it doesn't have Joy-Con, do we want that? But they could do then better triggers because the triggers on this feel phenomenal. The Steam Deck triggers, this is like playing, I hate to say it, but it's like, it's like if one of the other consoles made it. It's like playing a, more of a, hardcore controller. And I hate to say that because look, the Pro Controller is so great. But these triggers right here, these feel amazing. The sticks feel great. You got R1, L1, and then you got double paddles on the back. You see that? We got two programmable paddles here and two programmable paddles here. This is our L4 and L5, R4 and R5. They don't mess with ZR and ZL. On the top, we have a very similar structure. So these systems actually form factor wise, like parts aside, they're pretty darn similar. You can see we got the vents on the top, we got the headphone jack on the top, we got the power on the top, we got the volume on the top. They definitely learned a lot. Now, what's interesting here is the bottom of the switch obviously has the USB-C port um, for charging or where it's going to dock in. Now, the Steam Deck does not have that. The Steam Deck has its USB-C at the top, and honestly, that's the biggest difference form factor-wise. There also is not a slot for cartridges, but there is a memory card slot down here that is what you can use to augment uh, the storage capabilities. That's why I sell it for 256 gigs, which is funny considering how much the Switch comes with. It's like eight times as much storage. And I didn't want to go for the 512 because I can just pop in a bigger card and I can have plenty of storage. We got to turn this on. We got to turn this on and see what it's like when it's actually on. Please tell me this thing comes with charge. Let there be light. Hardware is so exciting. I mean, heck. Like I said, we haven't had a handheld competitor since the PlayStation Vita, which was a pretty darn good system, but it's weird to see nobody has picked up the mantle. Until now, until Valve, nobody has wanted to enter this space. And I bet they might not even say they've entered the space. If you ask them, they might say, no, this is just a PC in a form factor that you can, you know, take with you. They might not view it as, as handheld gaming competition, but it really is. It's, it's portable PC, it's portable gaming. The point of this is to play your games on the go, on the couch, in the bathroom, on the bed. All right, while this guy's installing, let me tell you a few more things. All right, it does have a touch screen. All right, it does have the touch pads. All right, it does have gyro, which is pretty darn nifty. There's a lot of options for control with this. You got the D-pad, you got the sticks, you got the touch pad, more of like a mouse interface, you got gyro. So it's providing more options than the Switch. Plus, you're not getting Nintendo games. And that's kind of the biggest thing that this can't have is Nintendo's amazing Switch first party lineup, 
So let me just be very clear and say that I'm not trying to state that the Steam Deck is a direct competitor to the Switch in terms of like it's going to take player base away. I think they're for very different audiences. I do not think that this chunks into the Switch sales at all. I do not think it hurts or affects any of the upcoming games. I still think the best portable gaming experience will be playing Breath of the Wild 2 on your Switch. And yet it still is so appealing to know that I could play Elden Ring in my hands. It's woken up. All right, it's ready to go. Welcome. It's so weird because on Nintendo, you know, A is like the right button, but here A is the bottom button. So that is going to just mess me up all the time. And just like that, I log in and I have 475 games on here that apparently can be played so many titles. My Steam library is ready to rock and roll. It says that 62 of them are great on deck. Let's load something up that would never run on Switch. Oh boy. Oh boy, boy, boy. I downloaded Dying Light 2, all right? This is a pretty much brand new video game. It downloaded super fast and it's running like a charm. So while the Switch version was delayed, and I mean, even delayed, it, it was just a cloud version. I'm playing full on Dying Light here on the Steam Deck. And this isn't even a game that's supposedly optimized for Steam Deck and it's still running really darn well. I am bashing and crashing. You guys wanna see this? Take a peek, here they come. They're coming to get me. Zombie action on the Steam Deck, destroying me. Look how pretty it looks, the lighting. This ain't no Switch, man. This is definitely what we have to look forward to in the future of handheld gaming. And for Steam Deck, it's here right now. I don't wanna to jump to conclusions. Okay, I'm gonna to have to play this a bunch and put it through the paces and come back with more. Do some comparisons, run the same game on Switch, the same game on Steam Deck, and kind of figure it out. But I cannot lie, I am incredibly excited by the prospect of this pro-level machine. The sticks, the triggers, the power. When all is said and done, I can turn on this Switch, I can go to my home screen on this console, and I can see Kirby, Animal Crossing, Legends Arceus, and more. I can see Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, eventually I can see Strikers, I can see Splatoon 3, Banana 3, and a whole big list of 2022 releases. Can't play Mario Party Superstars on the Steam Deck, but I will say that the Switch OLED feels insanely small in comparison, but I am currently very impressed and I really wanna dive in more. If there's anything specific you wanna see or any questions you have, any ways this makes you feel about a potential Switch Pro or a Switch 2, what Nintendo should do, please let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It's rare we get to unbox hardware and it's rare that it actually is similar to the Switch. For the first time, we're doing something on two systems and it's kind of the same thing. And that to me is so freaking cool. So I cannot wait to continue this adventure with all of you. Until next time, everybody, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. I'm gonna go Steam Deck it up. And uh, Switch, I, I, I might forget you for today, but I won't forget you for long. And no, I'm not replacing my Switch, but this sure is tempting. And it sure might be the future. And if it feels like that, I'm gonna be full steam ahead on Nintendo upgrading and evolving this system for whatever comes next. But until that time, everybody, thanks again for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. I love you so much. Switch Force, out.